And Vladimir Putin's congratulated Joe Biden on victory in the U.S. presidential election. It's after members of the Electoral College across the U.S. officially declared Biden the winner. The Russian president waited for that official confirmation of the win. Putin says any contact with the new administration is welcome, adding cooperation is in everyone's interest. However, Donald Trump says his legal challenge over alleged voter fraud is not over. This, as the Trump administration's attorney general, Bill Barr, in other news, has resigned. He earlier found no evidence of widespread election fraud. Caleb Mopin reports from New York. Donald Trump is still not conceding. Donald Trump says he is the legitimate winner of the 2020 election. No, it's not over. We keep going and we're going to continue to go forward. We have numerous local cases where, you know, in some of the states that got uh, rigged and robbed from, uh, from us. Now, there was a last-ditch effort to try and, uh, to try and you know, win the White House for Trump in the Supreme Court. Uh, we saw the state of Texas file uh, to have the results in the state of Georgia, in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin overturned based on allegations of fraud. The Supreme Court opted not to hear the case. They threw it out of court. And as a result, uh, today's Electoral College voting proceeded, and there was a vote, and Joe Biden has pulled ahead as the clear winner of that vote with a clear majority. Now, in the aftermath of the Supreme Court turning down Trump's, uh, Trump's proposal uh, and Trump's case um, and the Texas intervention, we saw leaders of the Texas Republican Party talk about the need to form some kind of union of what they're referring to as law-abiding states. The Supreme Court, in tossing the Texas lawsuit, has decreed that a state can take unconstitutional actions and violate its own election law. Perhaps law-abiding states should bond together and form a union of states that will abide by the Constitution. Now, divisions in the United States are intensifying. Uh, there have been repeated clashes between left-wing and right-wing protesters across the country. Just this weekend, we saw crowds of Proud Boys, that's a right-wing organization, clashing with Antifa left-wing activists. And there was violence. The police actually declared the situation to be a riot after shots were fired. It's pretty clear that on January 20th, Joe Biden uh, will be sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. It'll be on January 6th that Congress approves the Electoral College votes, and that seems to be pretty unstoppable at this point. Uh, however, that's unlikely to reunify the country. There's a lot of distrust, a lot of anger, a lot of animosity. Trump supporters feel this election was stolen from them. Uh, Trump's opponents uh, are still very angry about things that have gone on over the last four years, and it's very unlikely likely that the inauguration of Joe Biden is going to simply heal these wounds. A lot of deep divisions in U.S. society. Legal and media analyst Lionel told us the U.S. electoral college system anyway hardly stands up to modern voting best practice these days. I want to be the president of the United States. What is the fewest number of states I can win to get 270 electoral votes? The t not necessarily the biggest states, but they normally comprise in terms of size. Out of the 50 states, you would need to only win 11. This was done in 2012. The number may have changed somewhat, but just think about this. 11 states, the biggies, California, New York, etc., and it would comprise 27 percent of the popular vote, and you could be president. You want to talk anger? Try that one on for size. The idea of this is simply this. You're, it's not that you're voting. In the old days, nobody t trusted the citizen to understand the complexity of, the, of this. The founding fathers didn't want necessarily senators to vote, but they thought that we were just too, too busy with plowing and herding cattle to understand this. That's why the electors would meet oftentimes well after the election because it took so long for them to get to their state capitals. It seems archaic, it seems anachronistic, but there's an incredible brilliance in this because if you're the winner, it balances out. If you're the loser, it's antediluvian, it's archaic, it's antiquarian, it's ossified. So it depends on whose ox is gored. But I love the system. I just love it because it's part of who we are. 
confused and screwed up. 